Welcome to the Ford Studios of Skatomaville. <coughs> uh, pop quiz. N95. Good job. Second question. What are you aware of? Why am I wearing this outside? How about that? The unexpected. Wait, I'm getting ahead. Let's back up. I've heard it said that the true test of genius is if you're able to explain complex things in simple terms. Can't say that I'm about to do that. But I do want you to think about complex things. And it's likely you've heard that saying that goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Now let's think about that for a second. Is it possible to make lemonade out of lemons? Me thinks no. The best you're gonna get is lemon juice because you need some tools. You gotta have something to cut the lemon with and you need something to put it in. You need water and you need sugar or it's gonna be really not so good. And you also need something to drink it out of if you're gonna share. So there are items, ingredients and tools that need to be added to the expectation that if you got a bunch of lemons, eh, just make lemonade. And I get the optimism and I get the encouragement to go about it, but let me give you an example from my life of how things tend to work out, how a solution is found when I was not expecting it, but I was anticipating a solution. Subtlety between expectation and anticipation. I took efforts. Here's the story. You remember Alex Loudon from a previous episode said, Daniel, the thing that's holding you back is your equipment. This wing on your foil is one of the first ones and it's fabulous. I mean, it's carbon fiber, it's beautiful but it's slightly smaller than what you need because we've been able to develop. And so what you need is this, right? You need a much bigger wing in order to, for you to have a stable jibe. And so I called the factory and because of COVID, they're inundated with production. And it would be months and months. It'd be way past the end of this season before I'd get a wing. Wait a minute, you just showed me a wing. I thought you said you needed that. I did. There were none of them available. I had no idea how I was going to go about getting one. All right, watch what happened. I had my ears and eyes. I'm looking for a solution. And I believe by anticipation, I'll figure something out. I'm not going to get in there and grind and hammer and pound. Listen to this story, how it actually worked out. So as you see, we're being socially distant and the whole thing. Yeah. Keith, I was inviting you to be part of this, um, the evidence for this episode because you've done something highly unusual in today's world, which is to trust another human and also be part of a solution, which most people are not. And I wanted to have you tell the background of how this came about and all that you've been through on the other side of the story. <laughs> well, this is my first foray into uh, uh, foiling. I decided to get into foiling in late 2018 uh, after my third knee surgery and uh, said, well, this high wind sailboarding isn't for me and this looks like it is. So 
There's a local guy who's making these in the gorge, and I went in and bought this from him. And then this year, I started foiling on this. I was down at Stevenson one day, and, and I got it all together and put my suit on and went for a sale, and I didn't put these in the board. <laughs> oh, my because gosh. Because it took me 10 minutes to put this string in there, and I forgot these. So I went sailing, and I... I swam out about 25 yards and I got on the board and I sailed about 25 yards and I went and this fell out of my board into the river. I'm, into the river? Into the river. This is a big river. 75 yards off the beach at Bob's Beach in Stevenson. What are you going to do? Well, I hired a scuba diver to come and look for this and he, I spent 200 bucks and he couldn't find nothing. He spent about three hours looking. So I gave up on it and uh, went and bought another foil, a Moses. Three weeks after that, the scuba diver called me up and said, you know, I don't want to give up on that foil. How about you give me 400 bucks if I find it, and if I don't find it and spend all year looking for it, you don't owe me nothing. And I went, well, that sounds like a no-lose deal. So long story short, one day he went out and found it and pulled it up out of the river. Well, now I have two foils. So I was down on the beach one day and here came Daniel asking about this. Right. And uh, uh, I have a new, a new foil system uh, from the original. It has a bigger front foil, it's friendlier. And uh, we came to a deal and, and uh, he decided he wanted to buy this. Here we are. Keith, I really want to appreciate your um retrieving it, paying for it, because it turns out this thing is an absolute solution to my riding problem. And even in the previous episode, as you can see, that uh, Alex was like, Daniel, it's your gear. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. There's there the bigger is. wing that I've needed to yeah. uh, solve that. So thank you so much for all of your uh, anguish in being part of a solution. Oh, well, hey, you know, we got to make this work and we're all connected. Uh, it's uh, my belief you help somebody out and it turns out well in the end. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the foil. It turns out that Keith's character and generosity combined with an unexpected loss, combined with the diver's perseverance, on top of Alex's suggestion that I look at my tools, all became a solution. I then grabbed some of my physical tools, added a new hole in my fuselage, put threads into that, mounted the adapter and wing, and had an entirely new riding experience per Alex's suggestion. This story then becomes a physical example of how to find solutions. I'd like to suggest that Volume 1 of Scotomaville has cognitive tools for you to do likewise with your personal Everest. You see, there's 15 tools that you can apply to 1C opportunities, change the way you think and what you believe, and then start assembling new life experiences with the unexpected circumstances that come your way. When I say life has curves, it's been my experience that solutions come in complex forms. They often involve an unmet expectation, which is a fabulous opportunity for us to review our beliefs and our character and the foundation of uh, our thinking. And so this episode on expectations should include more examples. And as you can see, things are unexpected. It's about noon on September 11th, 2020. And you would remember in history, the terrorist attacks. The news today has wildfires across the entire West Coast, 10% of the Oregon population is now displaced. They weren't expecting that. That's the usual launch site. 
Not what we expect. Windsurfing season is coming to an end. There's roughly 10 days of sailing for the rest of the year. So the expectations for getting on the water, not looking pretty good for the end of this year. Yeah, this would be fun. Expectations can be a really valuable asset in your self-awareness, personal Everest. But it's not because they're so wonderful. It's because when you have an expectation of something, a really deep felt belief in the outcome of something in the future, and it doesn't happen, then you can really start working on acquiring an emotional vocabulary. Okay, that's a lot of effort just to be able to, where's my phone? <sighs> just to be able to put this up here in a massive amount of effort and not what you'd expect being in your right? So yeah, okay, you can get all emotional about all that, but now I got it up there and I don't know what was all with it, but I think it's rolling, so. Pro. And see, I don't even know how to use this thing yet. I mean, I think it's recording. Yeah, it's now recording. <laughs> okay, now we'll just get a picture of me driving. But, oh, yeah, there's a lot to learn. So, my achiever doesn't want to learn all that. It just wants to know it. You know, Vulcan mind meld? Well, that doesn't work so well. So, my expectations are out of line. I gotta go watch a lot more tutorials so that I can quickly pick things up and not think that it's just a dead battery, but that I don't know how to control the devices. Okay, that's confusing for you, right? No, I hope not. My intent for the Skatomaville series is to give you live evidence as tools and techniques and a way for you to observe the actual process of self-awareness and that usually involves a trigger. Triggers are emotional flares where your brain is pegged, you have a hard time finding the words to express things and you just... That usually, in my experience, is closely related to an unmet expectation. Now, an expectation is something that you fervently or you tenaciously own the future outcome and you commit like we did to go get awareness our airstream in Albuquerque until you're committed you can always pull back but once you are fully committed then providence moves it's not until you're fully committed that things happen you have to fight for what you want. <laughs> you really do. You can't just wait until it happens. You have to put the initiative, fully commit, and then some things can happen. And when things don't happen as you expected with your partner, with your business, with COVID, with the economy, with your job, your spouse, your school, the opportunity, you, you've got a lot of those, then all sorts of belief systems come into play on how they relate and what we believe and what we... <sighs> They're literally three, at least three miles away. Burp, burp, burp. <laughs> <laughs> I would like it to be quiet. It wasn't at Lake Pleasant. And it's not here. This is hilarious. 
and I'm learning to go with it. Because usually an unmet expectation is a gateway to personal growth. The deep emotions that come up give you an opportunity to peel back the onion. You remember that chapter? And to use triangulation to get more points of view. You remember that chapter. So expectations can be our friend. They can at least be an appreciated experience. They're definitely a gateway to personal growth. A few weeks ago, I had a great opportunity to do the unboxing of my first volume, right? The, the uh, volume. <laughs> Perfect. A few weeks ago, my box of volume one of Leaving Scotomaville arrived and I wanted to do an unboxing, you know, the classic YouTube. And there was non-stop interruptions and noise and traffic and emotion for me. Let me tell you, when you try to have, when you try to meet your expectations, film the car. But that's not bad. Shiny. Pretty. Motorcycles. Oh, another car. Get the car. Oh. Man, oh man. Okay? This is, no, I'm not okay. This is disgust. I, I hate this. It's like suffocating all the time. And it's outdoor. This is like, I'm not doing this. I understand the size of these three microns and 95% and all that just, it's just. Likewise, I wanted to shoot some shots of Angelina and I riding on the Twin Tunnels Trail. And that was filled with shots of other people. Have a look at your Strength Finders assessment and try to correlate where your strengths might set you up with expectations that are unrealistic. You see, mine are achiever input learner. So of course, I would expect myself to learn a lot faster than most people. And that's unrealistic. So I try to fly drones in high wind on a, that means it's a thousand feet in the air, in the wind, without satellite connection, in the smoke, and I've got less than 20 hours experience. High risk. Meaning, my expectations can be completely out of line, and my results be disappointing what you can definitely expect about expectations is that they are strongly linked to your strengths which are your coping mechanisms from your childhood wounds therefore they are absolutely strong indicators for wounds for patterns habits that are ripe for adjustment See? Things that you can learn over again. Because next time, oh, expect interruptions, noise, etc. I had expected, see, strongly imagined the outcome of my unboxing to be similar to the way I'd seen other people do unboxings. You know, something really exciting and really fun. And I had built up my emotional expectations so much couldn't be met. Similar with wanting drone shots that are cinemagraphic. I have to acquire those skills first. I can't just go straight to Disney outcomes without the flight time. And that entails taking risks. So when you have opportunity through a trigger 
to investigate an expectation that's been unmet, dig in. It's great. It's an opportunity to discover who you are. And you remember, you've got a supercomputer pointed at your brain that knows you better than you know yourself, and the race is on. Self-awareness, self-understanding, it's no longer an option. It's not a luxury. It's a necessity for you to stay ahead, ahead <laughs> for you to stay ahead of the recommenders. And I think that's enough to think about from my Ford Studios in Skatomaville. See you next episode. Hi, we are at Mount Hood today. And look at how pretty it looks with no snow and the flowers. We are um, definitely not in purgatory. It's pretty beautiful up here. It is. This is Mount Hood, our regular ski area. <laughs> it's beautiful. The flowers have blossomed. The bees are in heaven. Angelina, why are there always people showing up in my shots? <laughs>